it's Front Row Phyllis, and we are live at some place completely different than you normally see us. And we are here at the grand opening of one of the most pristine jewelry houses in the country that has opened up here in Lake Forest, which is a suburb in Chicago. I am talking about A.M. DePrisco. Well, I happen to be sitting with one of the co-founders, you know, the beautiful Lisa Niani. Swayze DePresco, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm great. It is so great to see you and so great to see this incredible place. I am, it's really come together beautifully. We're so happy about it. Right? Excited. And how about all the balloons in the outside there? Oh my goodness. You guys will have to show you a little later on. The balloons are, they were fabulous. Yes, yes. Including, I have to say, okay, everyone needs to check out my beautiful necklace. Unfortunately, it's on borrow, so I have to give it back, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, right. it's stunning, right? Isn't it? It is totally stunning. And the stunning. earrings yeah. and the bracelet, you have to check out the place for sure. Well, let's get to uh, talking about Miss Lisa. So right. if we can oh, get my a favorite chance, subject, right? right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay. If we can take everybody through a little bit back down memory lane, yes. and let's go to, um, you know, kind of back to your first Cinderella story, I call it, with your love, your husband of 34 years, Patrick Swayze. Yes. And um, so do you remember that first time you met? Well, you were 14. Right? Yes, I was around 14. My, you know, we had seen each other from afar. He had okay. this terrible reputation of being egotistical, and you had to raise this, the roof to let his head in. And, really? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm this outsider. I'm supposed to be this bad girl, which I wasn't really. Right. But I, so we kind of saw each other, and, and then our first contact was, which didn't help his reputation as a Casanova. I was walking in the theater that we right. were doing shows in and he was walking out and he reached over and pinched me on the butt and said hey cutie <laughs> and I was like this oh brother are you kidding me <laughs> really? you know, so, in all my 14 year old wisdom right so yes so that was our first he was, he was a little bit of a flirt but you know what he had grown up around dance hanging on the dance bars and right. pinching the girls on the butt and of course he's he was cute and so right. most, most of them did not mind it right <laughs> I'm sure so, you know what's so great is that, was there ever a time that, as years went on, that you felt like, wait, I am sharing Patrick with the rest of the world. We all see him on the screen in Ghost and Dirty Dancing and so many incredible films, and we all pictured him the way we visualize, you know what I mean? Was there ever a time that it's like, hey, you know what, he's mine. <laughs> he's mine, <laughs> right? But, but, but you know what, on that level, he was. I know. know. He was, and uh, if anything, the uh, his success and people adoring him so much. Right. Which, uh, it was, we were always celebrating that fact. Right. It was like, this is fantastic that right. this has happened, and it just meant that he was going to get better parts right. and, and, and really embracing work. all of that and yeah. taking it all in yeah. is and, and, um, the, and the same thing with uh, uh, you know because of course especially after Dirty Dancing you know yeah. like yeah I'm sure there are a lot of women in, in the country who weren't too fond of me right. you know <laughs> I was going to say well they were a little upset that he actually was married yeah no kidding <laughs> so it's like Really? He has yeah. a wife, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I get some girlfriends that say, oh, so-and-so, like, I had a crush on your husband. And I'm like going, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yay. Right. Great for publicity. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So in your memoir um, that you wrote, um, Worth Fighting For, I know that there's a line in there that is so beautiful that you call Patrick your beautiful man. And I, oh my goodness, I was like, so what does that, what that, what does that line mean? It probably means a lot of things, but really. Well, you know, as Patrick was beautiful on the outside, but also beautiful on the, the inside. inside. Yeah. And I know right from the very beginning when we first met each other and we were trying to figure each other out, there was still something inside of him that I looked at it and I just felt pure gold. And, uh, and it was something in his spirit. And, you know, and that's something, something about your soul that never changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and it really, and in particular, uh, the way he faced his pancreatic cancer showed the kind of hero that he truly was. Because in the worst possible situation, 
he, he faced it with such courage, but also wisdom and kindness and love. And uh, uh, it, was, it, was an, it was an amazing thing to see. Wow. He's, he was like every, everything good you could ever want to see in a man. Right. Or yeah. in a person, right? Yeah, in any, yeah. Yeah, in in anybody, a person. right. Yeah, because it, it, it's, it's like. not an easy thing to go through. No, none of those things yeah. are just, you know, yeah. yeah, they're definitely. So part of that is that I know that you have several passions, and one of the passions happens to be that you're the ambassador for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, I know right? it's a mouthful. I know, it really is a mouthful. <laughs> but I was able to read it. <laughs> and yes. So, um, so tell us a little bit about the network and what does the network do? It's uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, AKA pancan.org. Okay. It, it's a wonderful organization. Yeah. And it, there are quite a few really wonderful organizations throughout the country. But PanCan is multifaceted, where they, they raise funds, they supply grant money right. to researchers, but also they hook uh, patients up with clinical trials, okay. uh, in addition to being a great resource for information. You can oh, find okay. out anything you want. And, and actually, if, you're, if you've been diagnosed, you can call them. Yeah. And they will walk you through really? what resources are available because, you know, you get a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Right. You, you want to come out with all guns blazing. Right. It's right. A, it's an aggressive disease. Right. And you gotta like the arsenal. Okay. Come on. <laughs> exactly. You know? And yeah. uh, so, but the, so they call cover all facets of addressing the disease along with, you know, uh, being very instrumental, uh, which I was a part of, but getting a a bill passed in Washington that will compel the NCI to uh, give more attention to these low survival rate cancers, really? of which pancreatic cancer right. is the worst. It's really, yeah. yeah. So switching to a little lighter subject, <laughs> is you also have some other fun passions yeah. that I want to get to. Is um, You have passions with horses and yeah. dogs, right? Yeah. So tell us I'm about- I'm a pilot. You ha you're a pilot? I mean. Okay, so is there anything that you haven't done yet? Well, you know what, my, my, uh, my new mother-in-law okay. always uh, teases, because Albert, my, my husband right. now, Albert, he'll take right. videos of me doing carpentry and show them to his mom, and she goes, is there anything she can't do? Oh, right. that's right, she's not a doctor. Right, <laughs> well, she can be. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so now we're gonna take everybody back a little bit. We're gonna go to the present. And we're going to talk about your second Prince Charming, and that is your husband, which is Albert, which is A.M. DeFrisco. So that's where this all comes from. Yes. And um, so I think everyone wants to know, how did you guys meet? <laughs> right? Well, you know, both of us feel very fortunate yeah. that we met each other. Right. You know, of course, I've gone through it you know, the terrible right. illness, stress right. of that illness, and he had gone through a very um, painful divorce. Okay. And uh, we were introduced by mutual friends, right. both of which we've known for over 30 years. Wow. But Albert and I had never met because he was on the East Coast, I was on the West Coast. Right. <laughs> Little time but, difference. Of course, I was <laughs> married, and you know, there right. wasn't any reason to meet. Right. And, uh, well, this beautiful necklace, I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, you know, it's so funny because I've never really been a jewelry person. That's funny. <laughs> but I'm learning. I learned very right. quickly. Exactly. I learned quickly. And I have, right. a, I have a great appreciation for right? jewelry now that I didn't have before. Exactly. I met Albert. And Albert has the most uh, wonderful taste. And uh, actually, uh, early on when we were dating, he says, I want to go through all your clothes with you. Really? And, and, yeah. What do you should keep? You know. I was right. like, what girl has a, their right. date say, I want to go through your closet? He's hired as a stylist. We didn't even know. He, he's totally, he's very creative. And he, uh, uh, he's taken actually a lot of pieces of jewelry that I did have that right. I wasn't wearing and redesigned them for me. Wow. And so, uh, so there is yeah. definitely yeah. huge perks to, uh, <laughs> there are definitely huge perks to marrying an incredible jeweler. So how did you pick Chicago and how did you guys pick Lake Forest for a location? How'd that come about? The, uh, uh, we came to Lake Forest because my, one of my brothers, I have five. Wow. One of my brothers is 
and his wife moved from Wisconsin near here, near so they can be closer to Carol's family and her, their, her children, grown children. Of which is Jennifer. Okay. Jennifer Schmoder, who's very good, Sean. Right. And so we had uh, gone to dinner with Jennifer in Boston, and we started talking, and she said, look, you know, you guys should come out and see Lake Forest. She says, we really need a place like this. Right, right. And Jennifer's like, has a tremendous entrepreneurial spirit. Right. And she's, she's a powerhouse. She's a, she yeah. can get things she's done. She's phenomenal. Yeah. She totally so when you come to the store, you need to ask for Jennifer. That's what I'm or saying. Or John. Right. I mean, Jennifer or John. Yes, they're wonderful. Because Lisa and I probably won't be here. Maybe. So, so <laughs> it's great to get a, a situation where, again, it's all in the family. Right. And it also makes it very easy because uh, which is really uh, there's nice. an element of trust. And, you know, as we really see in the jewelry, particularly in the jewelry business. Right. You know, having, being able to rely on somebody and really trust what they do yeah. means a lot. Yeah, a it's lot. your name, uh, it's your brand. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, otherwise yeah. you don't stay in business, you know. Right. So it's, they Especially get the now. best service, the best merchandise. Right. And, uh, and that's what makes great success. Great success. Yeah. Well, we have had an incredible time. I could sit here and talk to you all night, but I know that we and have a grand be, opening. She would be so easy to talk to <laughs> all night. Trust? I think we're going to have to, we're going to have girls night pretty soon. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Well, thank you again. Thank and you. once again, we have had an amazing time here. And please note, once again, AM DePrisco is open Tuesday through Saturday up here in Lake Forest, a suburb of Chicago. And you need to check it out. And when you do, tell them Front Row Phyllis sent you. Live in Lake Forest, it's Front Row Phyllis.